So in today's video, I have come to yet another new forest here in Denmark. There is plenty of them to choose from. This one is called Tisvilde Hein, and it's a rather big one, so there's no way, shape or form I get to explore it all today. But that is exactly what I'm doing. I am out exploring today. I often get comments on YouTube how I find my locations, how I strategize, and even in last week's video, that almost half hour <laughs> long video, someone asked me also how I predict atmosphere and fog. I made a video about that last spring. It didn't do too well, but it's very useful. Uh, so be sure to check that one out. Like generally, if you have any questions about photography, or how I do my photography, I have most likely done a video about it. I think I've made more than a good amount, more than 250 videos. So just go to my channel and search for whatever you need to know something about. But today I'm out and, as I said, exploring. And that is also something I made a video about. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that either. Um, hopefully I can squeeze something out like out of the very last bit of autumn. But in all honesty, I do not expect much from today. However, there are some very gnarly trees. I just want to scout, check out up here, figure it out, maybe find some compositions for later use. And then I will probably find something else highly educational to talk about <laughs> uh, in this video. And yeah, there are some like yellow trees standing out in here in the background. I'll check those out and see what I come up with. So I have actually found one composition here that I think will work out really, really well. So on <laughs> the other side of this small birch here, I have this tree up here. As you can see, it really stands out on the darker background with all its yellow leaves. And what I'm working on right now is, uh, just so you can see, something like this here. So this is the composition. And I'm including the birch tree over here. And then I also kind of have another tree over here that is kind of like mirroring this tree here. You can see there's a brighter tree just next to it. I'm definitely going to remove that in Photoshop. And then there's a little bit of other stuff going around or on in the scene that I'm also going to remove in Photoshop. But this scene here I actually think looks really, really well. And it is an awesome scene, so I will probably let the yellow leaves be. But this is also a great example that you can turn into black and white and make those yellow leaves really stand out and be very, very white uh, on the darker background. So generally, yeah, I think this here is actually quite, quite a nice first shot, considering I didn't really expect to get anything today. So I'm really just walking around and, and picking out all these small splashes of color I see in the forest. So this particular scene stands a little bit out uh, contra relative <laughs> to, to the previous scene that I photographed. Because as you can see, I have this very young beech tree standing right here. And then I'm trying to like frame it among the birch trees and I'm like in a birch, mainly birch tree section of this forest and as you can see most of it is just like yeah dead but because these silver birches are primary 
white or brighter in their colors. This is one of those photos where I think it is best to just leave it in color and really use that color to make it, yeah, an interesting photo. So if I turned it black and white, you can see all the orange parts here would be white and it would just fall in with the background. So that is why I'm keeping it orange in this particular case. So yeah, straight on, nothing biggie. I'm of course going to just like remove these branches when I take the photo. But uh, yeah, those are my thoughts on this photo here. Nice little scene. So when I'm composing these photos here with all these beautiful trees that stands out, I'm using some very basic tools like the subject, which is obviously <laughs> the yellow trees. Uh, then I'm also trying to like balance the photo. I often end up with a central composition because it's, it's that subject I'm taking a photo of. And if I wanted to like be part of like a bigger environment, I may offset it a little bit from the center. And then I'm also trying to often frame the, the, the subject uh, simply just to like lead the attention even more, even though it's rather obvious what you're supposed to look at <laughs> in the photo. And then obviously contrasts, like contrast between the darker backgrounds or different colored backgrounds and then the subject. Then I'm of course also using the idea that you generally want to keep the edges of your photos very clean, simply just to avoid distractions. And these are like the main ideas and tools I use when I compose these photos. And if you want to learn even more about composition, of course, be sure to get my Compositional Tools eBooks, <laughs> Landscape Composition 1 and 2. There are links to them down in the description. Loads of five-star reviews. You guys seem to be really happy about them. Again, 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 again. Thank you so much to all of you who get the ebooks. They seem to be great tools also to bring into the field. Very practical guides, lots of photos, minimal text, so you actually do get through the ebook and learn what it is I'm trying to teach you. So check those ebooks out down in the description. So I seem to be slowly nearing those gnarly pine trees. It is. It's supposed to be like, I think, some of the oldest pine trees in Denmark. And they are gnarly because, you know, wind and weather and being close to the sea. However, I also just like going around here in the forest and taking these autumn photos and yeah. I have just been on a roll this autumn, like oh, late summer and autumn, but also during summer. I've got so many photos that I'm so happy about. And I do think, without comparing myself too much to many other landscape photographers, I seem to, per video, to have a really big output of photos. At least I'm showing <laughs> you guys a lot of photos in each video. And it usually takes a day or two to edit all of them. I really like get, get a good edit. Like last video from last week, I showed you like 15 or 16 photos. So I've just like been on a roll. And it's just got me thinking because one of the big tips that we hear again and again and again when it comes to landscape photography is to slow down, focus on one subject, work on it, and then get that photo. And the more you work on it, chances are the better the photo will be. 
But I gotta admit, like each time I hear that, I'm just like, am I doing something wrong? Because I'm basically doing the complete opposite. I'm not necessarily running around with the head under my shoulder, but I just shoot a lot each time I'm out. Just like today, I didn't expect anything, but I think I've got like four or five photos so far, and it's fine. They're not probably not going to be like the best photos in the entire world, <laughs> but I just have a huge output. And I've always been thinking like, hmm, that also seemed to work. Like, not slow down, not necessarily hurry up, but working fast seems to work for me. And I've been like, hmm, what should I call that theory? I will call it like the machine gun theory of landscape photography. <laughs> because it's just like shoot, shoot, shoot. And in many ways, I, I guess it's also a question about like, if you throw enough shit at the wall, at some point something will stick. Because obviously it's not like the 15 photos I took in last week's video that are going to be like my favorite photos of the year. I'm not even sure any of them will be. Maybe, maybe one of them will be. That last one was actually really good. But I have taken so many photos this autumn that I really like. There's always like I think there's always like one photo that for me really stands out in the videos that I that I make. And when I make a video each week, and there's usually a photo I really, really like from those videos or more, that actually uh, all in all over a year makes for like more than 50 photos that I'm really, really happy about. So yeah, I guess like, you know, shoot, shoot, shoot. And the more you shoot, the more photos you get. Then you have, of course, more to curate. But having more to curate is usually a luxury problem. It's harder to curate stuff if you have less to choose from. So in that way, I guess I can call that the machine gun theory of <laughs> landscape photography. So it's getting dark very fast. I've come to the place with all these crude, gnarly pine trees and they're very interesting. And I think that's the most diplomatic way of, of, of saying it. I'm very happy that I don't rely on these trees uh, to make a, a climax of this video because although they are interesting in and of themselves and I can see a whole lot of compositional potential I simply at least for now and I've been walking around here for like 15 to 20 minutes cannot find a, a, a cohesive a, a holistic composition that would work. I can find focal points, but they keep being interrupted by a, a messy or chaotic background. I can find foregrounds, but then I can't really find any interesting background. Um, it's just very, very messy here. And I think a, a big part of being successful with your composition is to be able to create that structure and order in the photo w without it just being like a, a, a big abstract mess of, in this case, branches, crude branches. Like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this section over here. And if I was to take that photo, there's just so much <laughs> around it um, yeah so maybe I should go here on a very moist morning where the Sun comes up and it throws some beams down through the canopy and I can somehow use those beams in the compositions uh, along with some uh, crude foreground or something like that uh, or at least I will have to spend a whole lot more time walking around in this section it's actually not that big of a section of the forest um, to, to really dig in and find those interesting compositions. 
like it should be able to you know just put on a wide angle lens and then just find some crude branches leading through the photo and and then you can call it a day but you know i've done that so many times that it's not really that interesting anymore uh, so yeah I think I will just end the video here. Um, if you want to learn how I edit my photos, all those awesome photos that I've shown, uh, I show in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course how you should, uh, you, how you can edit uh, awesome photos. So be sure to uh, check that one out. There's a coupon code down in the description. Uh, right now, you can also be fast if you're watching all the way to the end of this video. Um, and, and join my masterclass slash webinar uh, mastering composition in landscape photography. It's uh, going on this weekend, so check that one out too in the description. If it's uh, if you're watching this too late, then well, then the live event has has come and gone. So uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment. And uh, yeah, let me know down in the description your thoughts about this video i kind of feel that it was a little bit all over the place but i think i will manage to put it together in a way that makes sense thank you so much for watching <laughs>